Diwali. This morning I was wondering whether anybody will come because it was pouring and it was raining and it was so nasty and but I was then I was remembering that when it rains before auspicious days, on auspicious days, it's actually an auspicious sign also. So I was saying that uh, you know it's wonderful that it rained, and at perfect time, Lord Indra, um, <clears throat> who has been once burned by Krishna, said, "I better take the clouds away before all the devotees assemble." And then it became nice and sunny. So so wonderful. So this day is celebrated all over the world, Diwali. Nowadays it's very much about lighting lamps, exchanging gifts, bringing sweets, exchanging sweets, meeting with relatives, friends, and it's more social. Just like any other festival, you take Christmas, you take Thanksgiving, you take Navratri, or any other festival. The meaning of it has completely changed. And it's become very much social, but still it's okay. It's still good. At least that much is happening. And I was meditating on this, that just like this week, this whole month of Karthik, there's many events. Diwali is one of them. There was also Bahula Ashtami, which was the appearance day of Srimati, or Shishi Radhakun, Radhakun and Shamkun in Vrindavan. Then also there is Diwali. Can maybe some mother can take care of the child, can wait outside um, if they're getting a little uneasy. Thank you. Um, also, then tomorrow is Govardhan Puja. Then there was Lakshmi Puja. There is Durga Puja. There is Bhaudij is coming up. Like this, there are so many events happening. But even when Radha Kund and Sham Kund which are the most auspicious, holiest places in this entire universe. It is said in the Skanda Puran that out of the entire creation of the Lord, the entire universe, this Bharat Bhumi, this earth planet, is the most holiest, auspicious. In this Bharat Vansha, the land of Mathura is the most holiest. Within the land of Mathura, Vrindavan is the most holiest. Within the realm of Mathur Vrindavan, Govardhan Hill is most pious and holiest. And within Govardhan Hill, there are two small ponds, Radha Kund and Sham Kund. Of that, Sham Kund is the most holiest. And more than that is Radha Kund. Because these were created by the Lord himself, Radha Kund and Sham Kund. One is created by Rad Srimati Radharani and the gopis, and the other one by Krishna. And after they were created, 5,000 years passed, Kaliyu came, and these kundas were pretty much disappeared. And 5,000 years later, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is none other than Krishna, appeared, and he rediscovered these two ponds. And now, hundreds and thousands of devotees are in Vrindavan, taking dip in Radha Kund Shamkund, not only in India, but also in the Western world, in all nooks and corners of the world. So similarly, I was thinking the whole purpose and meaning of Diwali has also changed. This Diwali, the significance behind Diwali is when Lord Ramachandra returns to Ayodhya after 14 years of exile. For 14 years when Lord Ramachandra was away, along with Lakshman and Sita, the hearts of the residents of Ayodhya was filled with darkness. They did not light a lamp in their house for 14 years. As soon as the sun set, there was no light in Ayodhya. Because their most dear Lord Ram was in exile. And they could feel the pain of Ram. That he's in the forest. There's no light there. How must they be staying there? So they also were performing those austerities. And when Lord Ramachandra returned to Ayodhya, that night, the night he was supposed to return, the entire Ayodhya was lit with lamps all over. So it is a way of welcoming. It's not about just about good taking over evil. It's not just about lighting lamp and taking away darkness. We have torch light for that. You can get from Home Depot anytime. But it's about lighting the lamp in our hearts also, which has been like Ayodhya's residence. The only difference is that the residents of Ayodhya know why their heart is so dark. 
In our case also, we are also suffering. Isn't it? Is there anybody in here, please raise your hand, if you're not suffering or have no pain? Pain caused by your body or, and mind? Or pain caused by other living entities? Or pain caused by natural calamities? All right, very good. So we are all in that situation, but we don't know why we are in that situation. The residents of Ayodhya knew. So when we celebrate Diwali, everything else is good. I was remembering how we, I used to celebrate growing up, fireworks and all. And that's okay, you can do fireworks, you can clean up your house on Diwali, you can do Lakshmi Puja, but with Narayan there also. And then you have Krishna in the center, then there is a meaning behind it, there is a purpose behind it. Otherwise it's just social, it's just a ritual. Whatever we do in life, if you bring Krishna in it, it's like many, many zeros. And those zeros, you can have a million zeros and it has no value. But as soon as you put a one before it, it becomes a million. And that one is Krishna. So I was then thinking, I'm so grateful, we are all so grateful to Srila Prabhupada who brought this information to the West. And today we Indians who thought we know how to celebrate Diwali are celebrating Diwali in the real sense of glorifying and hearing the glories of Lord Ram, Lord Krishna. That is the way of celebrating Diwali. Many times on Diwali day, devotees or people do not want to go out of their house because it's not good to leave home. But I say to them that on a day when Lord Ramachandra returned, all the Ayodhya Vasis left their home and came outside to greet him. And in the same mood, today we are celebrating Lord Ram coming back and we want to stay at home. How unfortunate. But with education and like this uh, spreading the message, one day will come, just like how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the rediscovered Radha Kund and Sham Kund, the entire world will know the real meaning of Diwali. When, when the press comes and take an interview, can you tell us a little bit about Diwali? We'll speak with the names of Lord Ram and Krishna. Not just it's a good time to have exchange and everybody's happy mood, joyful, but what about after Diwali? Again, we'll go back to our same problems? No. So if we bring Lord Ram, if we bring Krishna in our hearts, then the light is there all the time. And we learn how to handle our problems and situations. So just like uh, Ayodhya, Lord Ram returning, there's also another incidence that happened on this day of Diwali. And it was in Vrindavan. So now I'll take you from Ayodhya all the way to Vrindavan. How many of you all have been to Vrindavan? Please raise your hand. Many. About half the crowd. I would tell the other half that as long as your body is intact, make sure that you visit the holy place of Vrindavan. And make sure you visit Govardhan. And within Govardhan, as I mentioned, go to Radha Kund and take three dips in Radha Kund. The amount of sins that you cannot even think about committing, and we don't even know in past lives how many we may have done. By visiting Radha Kund once, all those sins are evaporated, and we get the mercy of Radharani to get love for Krishna. So make it your desire and goal of life. We are all working people here. We make money, save money, and then we go to trips here and there. But also within that trip, you want to go to Vrindavan once in this lifetime. So one day on Diwali day, early morning, before the sunrise, Mother Yashoda was resting, was sleeping with Krishna, hanging on tight to Srimati Radharani. Those who have little kids know, have your kids hold on to you. Make sure that you're there, you're there. And a very nice, cool, pleasant breeze was blowing. And that breeze touched the cheeks of Yash Yashoda Maya. And she felt the cheeks, the, the wind on her, breeze on her cheeks, as if somebody had just touched her. She opened her eyes. She realized Krishna. Krishna was sleeping next to her. And then remembered that today is the auspicious day of Diwali. She said, I must wake up, get up now, and start preparing sweets for Krishna. 
Krishna loves sweets. Krishna was hanging on tight to Yashoda Maya. So he slowly took his arms, moved on the side, got up from her bed, and gradually she went into Nanda Bhavan. Nanda Bhavan is Nanda Maharaj's Yashoda Maya's kitchen. Now that Nanda Bhavan is so big, it's so big, you can't even imagine. She rushes to Nanda Bhavan and she sees there are many other maid servants who are already up and getting things prepared. Preparations are already going on in Nanda Bhavan. Yashoda Maya enters and makes sure everybody is doing what they were supposed to do. Every, the night before everything, the preparations were made. Everybody was given instruction, you have to cut karela, you have to cut this, you have to cut that, you have to make this laddu, that laddu ke liye, you have to make all the preparations, the ingredients should be ready. And there were also many fires, fire places to do the cooking, they were all ready. And Yashoda Maya was the one who would cook for Krishna. Although she had many maid servants, but it would only be Yashoda Maya who would cook for Krishna. The other ones will do all menial services, cleaning, cutting up and all that. And she started preparations for that, went around, made sure everything is okay. And then finally, she comes to this big pot, which has butter inside, yogurt inside, and that is for churning. Now, in Nanda Bhavan, the milk that came into her kitchen, Nanda Maharaj had 900,000 cows, milk giving cows. How many? 900,000. And out of these 900 cows, Yashoda Maya had kept aside eight special cows from whom Krishna will get milk. Now these eight special cows were fed a special grass. Uh, they, it had a special smell in it. Smell of lotus flower. And Padma Gandha. Its name was Padma Gandha grass. And the seven, eight of them were fed this grass. And the milk coming out from the seven cows was then fed to the eighth cow. Mm. You're with me? The seventh cows gave milk and that milk was given to the eighth cow. And from the eighth cow, the milk that the eighth cow gave was for Krishna. Because it had from all those seven, the, the lotus like the smell, the fragrance, a special milk. These were powerful cows. And the eighth one got. And the eighth one knew that the milk that I'm going to give is for Krishna. So she gave ample of milk that can feed the entire Vrindavan Vasis. So all the pots in Yashoda Maya's house were filled with this Padma Gandha milk. Butter, milk, yogurt, Sweets, everything was made from this. So she had this big pot. In that there was a rod, a rope, and a silken handle on it. And she started churning in the morning. While she's churning, she's singing Krishna's glories. She's singing about Krishna, what he did yesterday. Every day Krishna has some new mischief. Every day Krishna has some new pastimes. And she remembers that, she starts singing. All the ladies, others are also hearing that sound and they're doing their own work. One from this, cutting something, putting, it's all synchronized, you know, like how they go. Da -da 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 -da. Yashoda Maya is going like this. Her bangles are making some nice, beautiful sound. Her anklets on, the, on her feet are making noise. Her earrings are swinging back and forth. The flowers on her head are also dangling. This all explanation is there. And while she's doing all this, suddenly, everything comes to a full stop. Nothing moves. The anklets stop, the bangles stop, the earrings stop. You know why? Huh? Say it. Yes. Because Krishna, suddenly she's doing like this. And she sees Krishna, lotus face. So Krishna heard Mother Yashoda singing. And that woke him up. And you know how some of us are really lazy waking up in the morning. Krishna somehow got off the bed. 
he got down, he crawled, and he came next to Mother Yashoda, and he's standing like this, holding his sari, and his one hand about to catch the rod. And Mother Yashoda just pauses. Such was his beautiful face, that the mother who saw him every day, every day, this morning again she sees and everything freezes. And she freezes and all the other maidservants freeze right there. And Krishna's eyes were red. He was angry. He was biting his lips. And you could see the reddish, bimba-like lips, his white teeth biting on it, red eyes, and a dark bluish complexion. Beautiful face. And right away, Mother Yashoda understood that he is not happy because she left him while he was sleeping. Does that happen to you, parents? Yes. All right. So Mother Yashoda looks at him, drops the rope, opens her arm, and Krishna rushes into his arm, her arm. She takes him on her lap and sits down. And she's looking at him. And she started feeding him her own milk. She feed, fed her own milk also. Butter and all was made from the cow. And then, slowly, while she was doing that, she smelled something. Something was burning. And she could tell that it was the milk that was kept on the pot, eventually to make butter and all for Krishna, was the timer, the clock had st was not working, there was no battery in it. So the timer didn't go off and the milk started coming out. So she dropped Krishna on the side and she rushed to save that milk. Obviously you would do that, right? If you're with your kids. But that was a big, big mistake. And Krishna didn't like that at all. Krishna was thinking, me, I'm having your milk right now. Is I, am I that important to you? Or is that silly milk important to you? Which also was right, she was right because she was going to feed that to Krishna only to save for him. But anyways, long story short, he was very upset. And while she was gone, his anger was just growing and growing. And he wanted to show Mother Yashoda that I'm not happy. He started looking around for something, and he found a small piece of stone in a corner. The stone was looking at it. Krishna was looking at the stone. The stone goes, please come pick me up. And Krishna kept looking at it. Remember, in Vrindavan, everything is alive. Everything is there to serve Krishna. So the stone is so happy, waiting, waiting. When is he going to come and pick me up? And he rushes to the stone, he picks up that stone, he brings it back, and he looks at that big pot where Mother Yashoda was churning, and he goes and he hits the bottom of the pot and creates a hole, and everything inside starts leaking. The milk starts coming, the yogurt starts coming up, and then slowly there's a big spill all over. You have like the oil spill in the ocean and all. Here it was all spill. Now, he was not satisfied, he was still not happy. When Krishna is upset, Mare Krishna Rakhe Ke, Rakhe Krishna Mare Ke. And when Krishna is upset, no matter what, he can escape. So Krishna wanted to teach more lesson. And then he looked ahead and he saw the storage room, that Mashoda, Mother Yashoda storage room where she keeps, you all have a small closet, right? A tiny, tiny little closet to keep your spices. Nand Bhavan, had a closet that was probably 10 times bigger than this. And inside there, all sorts of pots, all sizes of pots with milk, yogurt, butter was there. Krishna wanted to go in there. But again, there was a challenge. There was a whole spill that he had created right in front of him. These are some fine details that you need to know. Otherwise, I can end the class in two minutes. He did this, he got tied, and they went back to home garden and finished. Any questions? <laughs> so Krishna said, I want to go into that closet, but how do I go? There is this puddle here created by me. He said, okay, I'm going to try and jump over it. So he took two, three steps back. He started, he came running fast and he made a big jump. But guess where he landed? Right in the puddle. 
everything splash. And he was like, okay. And he still started walking towards the storage house. But this time what happened was he was carrying the footprints from the churning, the butter, the yogurt, and he was walking to the storage house. This is where I thought, this is my thing, I Prabhupada didn't say that. This is where I think the long jump in Olympics started from Krishna, <laughs> trying to jump over. So then he goes inside and he opens the door, and then he sees all kinds of pots. And he starts to removing them, putting his arm inside, licking. And he licks a little, then he takes more, and he splashes on the wall. Abai, don't do that at home, okay? <laughs> He takes, uh, disclaimer, okay, this is kids. So he takes more butter and he splashes on the floor, he splashes on the wall, then he takes, he throws the pot on the floor, he like this takes all the pots and he tastes it, throws it, and makes a complete mess in Mother Yashoda's storage room. Now here comes Mother Yashoda, back to Krishna. The milk has been controlled. She comes back to where Krishna is so I can start feeding. When she gets there, there's a whole big puddle. And she realizes this must be Krishna. But then she smiles, motherly affection, and she says, she thinks, and she thinks that, oh, how smart is my son? He could have hit this stone anywhere on the top of the, the pot, but he hit it right at the bottom because he knew if he hits right at the bottom, everything that I've been doing for this since morning will all drain out. So she was a little happy. Then suddenly she knows, notices a splash around and footsteps of Krishna. And then she gets up and starts following that and goes into the warehouse. And the moment she opens the door, imagine your closets. It's a mess. What would happen to you? That day Prabhus will not come home. Kids will run away. Mother Yashoda sees that and she's completely angry. Where is Krishna not to be found? And she knows that this is too much. This is, you have, you have passed all limits. Breaking apart, okay. Stealing gopis, butter, okay. All this mischief, okay. But this whole thing, this is not acceptable. She looks at that crime scene and she yells the moment she opens her, yeah! And all her maid servants start running and come over there and say, what happened, Maya? And they all look and their all eyes like Jagannath, Baldev, and Subhadra. <laughs> big, big eyes. And they are now all looking at Yashoda. What is she going to do? And trembling. And Yashoda Maya is angry and she looks around. And there she finds a stick. And she looks at the stick. And the stick says, no, no, not me. You, know, you don't want to be a stick that's going to hit Krishna, right? The stone was OK. But she goes running and she picks up the stick and goes looking for Krishna. She follows the footprints that takes her to the backyard of their Nanda Bhavan. And through the window, she looks in the back, and there you go. There is little Krishna sitting on an old unused grinding mortar, this big, you know, in which you do the spices. In India, they make spices like that. And he's sitting on it. His back is facing Yashoda Maya. And he's feeding. He took one pot with him. He dropped, broke everything, he took one pot. He's sitting there, and he's feeding all the monkeys. He's surrounded by all the monkeys, and he's feeding them yogurt. And the monkeys are like, he takes it and he throws it, and they're loving it, and they're eating and fighting and all, and they're relishing it. Imagine this situation. Krishna is sitting on it, on a height. All the monkeys are down, and from the top, you know how the pujari throws flowers after Abhishek, you know, and grapes and all. He's throwing butter and yogurt. And Yashoda Maya slowly comes out from her Nanda Bhavan with the stick. And while the monkeys are having, the monkeys are facing Yashoda Maya. Krishna's back is towards Yashoda Maya. And while these monkeys, you imagine, you know, you've seen monkeys, they're eating, and suddenly they freeze. And they are like going like this and, and, and scared, what to do now? And they look at Krishna, and Krishna realizes that something is wrong. And he probably thinks, he's thinking that it must be Mother Yashoda, but how do I look in the back? And he looks closely into the eyes of one of the monkeys, and in the eyes of that monkey, he sees Mother Yashoda coming with a stick. <laughs> and that monkey closes his eye, 
And before she comes there, all of them start running hither and thither. And Krishna quickly stands up, turns around, and he's in a shock. Mother Yashoda and him, eye to eye contact. He has a pot in his hand. And the pot drops the pot and he jumps from the grinding motor on the on the ground. And when he jumps, you know, he, he dangles like he, he can, he's so little, right? And he's jumping from a height. And I think this is my own personal thing, but I think that high jump in Olympics probably started from here when Krishna jumped from that big grinding motor because he was little than the grinding motor. So he jumps, and when he jumps, Yashoda Mahajaya is trying to catch hold of him. He says, Krishna, don't run. And he turns around, and he starts running. And this is where I think relay race or 100 meters in Olympics also started from this incident. And she's running with her stick to catch Krishna. Catch who? Lord Brahma, Brahma was, he's chanting. Chinta mani prakara sadma shukalpa vriksha Laksha vrateshu surabhira vipala yantam Lakshmi sahasra sadasambrama sevyamanam Govinda madi purusham tamaham vajami And here, she's saying, Brahma is saying, you are the cause of all causes. You are the first created being. I worship you, Brahma. And here is Mother Yashoda. You naughty boy always make you fun. <laughs> Cheating everybody and breaking gopi spots. Govinda madi purusham today me binding. <laughs> huh? She's upset. Brahma and the demigods are wondering what's going on here. Lord Shiva praises Krishna. And here is Mother Yashoda running after him. Trying to bind. And they run and there is a real, they're running each other behind. And Krishna finally runs. He also goes outside their house near the streets. And she, he's not able to catch. Finally, people all around, walking around also notice that something is going on in, in their house. Mother Yashoda is running after Krishna. They all start gathering. And finally she gets hold of Krishna. And Krishna is not even looking at her. She's, he's just looking down. And he's thinking, how can my mother, who till this morning was loving me, and now how come her nature just changed suddenly? She's coming to hit me with a stick. This is how mothers are. One point you love and next moment you start yelling. Everybody does, all the mothers, this is common. So he was like, this is not right. And he caught hold of Krishna. And she said that, and there she looked at the grinding motor on which he was standing. She says, you know what? Her two sides, you know, mother lovingly affection with the stick on, Krishna was completely shaking and she thought to herself that if I hit, it's not good, Krishna is a loving. But her other side said that, no, 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 listen, you can't tolerate something like this. Discipline is discipline. You have to finish your homework on time and you have to eat your allotted food, you know, all these things. So both, good side and mother's other side is talking to her. And finally she throws the stick away and says, I have an idea, I'm going to tie Krishna now and punish him like this. So now how to tie? So she right away first thinks that I'll take this ribbon on my head. She had tied her hair. She takes out that ribbon and she takes the ribbon and sees and she thinks that, okay, this is not enough to tie him. Then suddenly she realizes that she had made these braids, you know, ladies do have these braids. So there was a nice rope, thin thread with so she takes that out also. She ties both the rope and the ribbon. And she tries to tie Krishna to this ukhal. And it is two fingers short. So then she called all the maid servants and said, hey, Haribol! <laughs> Wake up, everyone. Haribol! <laughs> Bring the ropes. We need more ropes. And the maid someone says, yes, yes, Mataji, yes, Mataji. And they run inside and they bring more ropes. And you show them, they all tie it up. And she says, now I'm going to tie up Krishna. She puts the rope around and tries to tie. And it's again? Two fingers short. Two fingers short. How did that happen? 
She tells the maid, hurry up, go into the storage room. Every pot that was hanging had a rope on it. She says, go get all those ropes. They go and bring all those ropes. They start tying each one of them. While that time, she's holding Krishna. You're not going anywhere. Ties all of them, says, now I'm going to tie him. She puts it, as soon as she puts it on the back, the rope starts shrinking. And she tries to tie him. What happens again? Two fingers short. This time, she's very upset. She tells the maid servants, go quickly to the barn. We have 900,000 cows. Go and get ropes. Every cow is tied with a rope. And all the maid servants run to the cow barn and they undo the ropes from thousands of thousands of cows. And they bring and dump a pile of ropes in front of Yashoda Maya. I said, what are, you, what, are you, what are you thinking I'm gonna do? Come on, start tying up. And they all start tying knots to each other. And now this time, all the maid servants and all, they take the rope around and give the two ends to Maya. And Maya brings it closer. But what happened? Two fingers short. Now by this time, imagine this whole entertainment is going on. And many, many Vrindavan Basis have already started gathering outside. Yeah? And they're noticing. And Mother Yashoda says, hey Haribol, what are you all doing here? Go and get more ropes from your homes. And all the Vrindavan Basis rush, go to their homes to bring more ropes. And this is true. Piles and piles of ropes. And she ties, tries to put it again on his belly. We all thought it was just one rope, right, they brought. But no, these details are given. How many ropes were used? And again it is? Two fingers short. Two fingers short. Two fingers short. Now, finally, Mother Yashoda gives up. And she has no idea how is this happening. And she's standing on top of Krishna. And she's exhausted. This started in the morning. Now it's late afternoon. And she's been doing this for five, six, six, seven hours and still not able to bind Krishna. Finally, one drop of sweat falls from Yashoda Maya's forehead and it falls right on Krishna's forehead. Krishna sees that and realizes mother is tired. And at that same time when that happened, a hand, one hand, a small tiny hand came in between Krishna and Mother Yashoda. They looked at the hand and they saw whose hand is it? Anybody knows whose hand it was? It was Srimati Radharani's hand. By this time in six, seven, eight hours, the word had already spread all over the Vrindavan. All the Brajbasis were here. Srimati Radharani also was there. So she brought her ribbon and gave it to Mother Yashoda. Krishna now thought, enough. I've been running around. She's not going to be able to tie me. Who can tie me? Nobody can tie me. But seeing the sweat of Mother Yashoda, the love of Mother Yashoda, and Srimati Radharani's love, where she's giving the ribbon, Yashoda Maya said, let me try once more. She took that ribbon. As soon as she took that ribbon, all the previous ropes that were getting shrunk suddenly appeared in a big pile in that veranda. And Yashoda Maya's ribbon and the thread that she had taken out from her braids were around Krishna. Yashoda Maya took Radharani's ribbon, tied a knot to it, brought it together. And this time it was not two fingers short. She tied Krishna tightly. From here we can see that Krishna, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, many, many sages, they do tapasya for years and years. Brahma himself, the creator of this universe, prays Krishna to give him a, a moment of darshan. And here, through pure love and devotion, Mother Yashoda was able to bind Krishna. After this happens, Mother Yashoda goes inside to do all her cleanup. Uh, and then Krishna, everybody is gone. Mother Yashoda says, Chalo, apne apne ghar jao. Ho gaya khel. Everybody now go back to your house. And everybody leaves. And now it's almost time of twilight. The sun is going to set. When that one has beautiful reddish clouds, the sun is almost going to set. And now Krishna is alone, left alone. Monkeys have gone. And Krishna notices two huge trees in his veranda. 
Amal Arjuna trees, and Krishna crawls to those trees, and he gets stuck in between those two trees. The whole grinding motor gets stuck, and Krishna keeps pulling and pulling and pulling, and suddenly those two gigantic trees fall on the ground, creating a tumultuous sound. And from that, two great personalities, Nalakuver and Manigrev, appear from this tree. Are you all with me? Two great personalities. Now these two personalities were the sons of Kubera. And they were very opulent, very rich. And one time, they were bathing in one of the ponds with many apsaras, and they were drunk. They were drinking heavenly liquor. And at that time, Narad Muni passed. And when Narad Muni, great sage, came, devotee of the Lord, these two forgot to pay respects. And because of that, Narad Muni cursed. They say, you, first of all, you can't even straight stand straight. You're not even giving respects. And you're not even wearing clothes. And like an animal, you're just enjoying here. I curse you to become trees. Because you don't like to wear clothes and you just open. So trees don't have, you will be standing there forever. And right away, Nalak, Nalak Kuvera and Manigri realize their mistake and pray to Narad Muni to give some concession. Narad Muni says, okay, but the Supreme Lord will come and deliver you. They were standing there, those trees were standing there, it is said, for 22,000 years. They were standing there for that many years. And then finally Krishna came and relieved them and they prayed their obeisances and went back to the spiritual world. So these are some of the stories that happened in the past time. But what can we get from these stories? These are good pastimes a lot of you already know. There's also more after these trees fall down and after this tumultuous sound, all the Vrindavan Vasis come. Nanda Maharaj comes and he sees that Krishna is tied up. She gets, he gets really angry at Yashoda Maya. And uh, Krishna is still upset with Yashoda Maya. And ba Nanda Baba realizes what happened. But he's thinking how to take off his anger from Yashoda. So he suddenly tells Krishna, okay, you know what? I'm the king of Vrindavan. Am I not? Yes, Baba. So as a king, I must discipline and punish the person who has done this to you. And this is your mother. So now I'm going to punish your mother and she's going to have to bear, take this punishment. And when Krishna heard that his mother is going to be punished by her father, his heart melted. And right away he yelled at Nanda Baba and said, No, you cannot punish my mother. And he ran into mother's arms. And Yashoda Maya cried tears after tears. And Krishna Tari cried tears. And from this we can see, there were three things that Krishna, we can learn from this. One is that there are many festivals happening throughout the year. Even Diwali is happening and tomorrow is Govardhan Puja and many other festivals. But this is the only festival that happens every day for 30 days, for the entire month, with this prayer of Damodar. Every day we offer ghee lamb to Damodar and sing Damodar Ashtakam. There is no other festival that is celebrated for 30 days for the entire month. So Krishna wanted to glorify his mother. She wanted him to become her to become famous. You look on the altar. Who we have here? At the feet of Shishi Gornita. Yashoda and Damodar. We talk, we sing Radha Damodar, Radha Kunjabihari, Radha Madha, Radha. But Damodar and Yashoda? This name Damodar was given by Yashoda Maya. When she tied Krishna and finally she was able to tie it, she says, Damodar. Dam means rope, Udar means belly. The one who has been tied with the rope on the belly is Damodar. And that's how the name Damodar came. So he wanted her mother to become famous. And that's why he did that. The other reason was that Krishna wanted to teach us, the world, that it is only through bhakti, through devotion, that one can get Krishna. It is not through our intelligence. It is not through our money. What can we cook for Krishna in our small little tiny Kalyuga kitchens? What money can we give Krishna? What kind of altars can we give Krishna? What kind of deity dressing can we give Krishna? He has everything. He's the owner of this. Lakshmi is, is at his feet. These material things cannot please Krishna. You may have the best home, the best car, the best deity altar, 
We spend a lot of time around that, you know, nicely decorating our altars and then inviting and here you have all. But if that love for Krishna is missing, you will never get Krishna's attention. But if you have a table on which you set Krishna, without any decorations, because that's all you can give. But you have sincere love for Krishna, Krishna is yours. So Krishna wanted to prove from this that what Brahma, what Shiva, what Indra could not do, here is Mother Yashoda, she's getting that from me. She's able to bind me. And the third thing that Krishna teaches us from this story is that Krishna always keeps the word he has given of his devotees. How? In this story we see that Narad Muni had cursed Nala Kuver and Manigriva and he said that the Supreme Lord will come and liberate you. So just to keep his word, Narad Muni's, he delivered Nala Kuver and Manigriva. When they appeared, Krishna didn't even give much audience to them. Krishna just was keep crawling and his friends had also come. They came, he said, okay, take a go to heaven. And when they saw that Krishna really didn't really care much, you know, they say he wanted to be left alone, they went. So these three things we can learn. That as a devotee, when Prabhupada said, when Bhakti Vinod Thakur said, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that this movement will spread all over the world, he will make it happen. When he said that a Senapati Bhakta will come and spread this message of Hare Krishna all over the world. It happened. And when we also sincerely stand up and say in front of Krishna, Krishna, I want to do this for you. I will make it happen. Or when you make a word and say, okay, I'm, this will happen for the devotees. He helps us in doing that. So we must learn from the, these, these pastimes. Lord Ram's also returning to Ayodhya. There is so much message behind it. So let us today on these special occasions ask for special mercy from the Lord that please enlighten our heart and also we don't want to be famous but please give us an opportunity to serve you and in this way any festival that we celebrate is auspicious association of devotees is very important everyone it's very important we can practice spirituality sitting at home sure but in the midst of devotees in the association of devotees we really get a lot of strength and mercy so these sunday programs are really catered for all of us to come together in masses and sing the glories of krishna make this your priority in life give five days to your office but to give one day to Krishna like this? Well, one may say, I give to Krishna every day at home. No. We have to follow what the Acharyas are saying. Acharyas are not saying you can practice anywhere, sitting anywhere. Yes, when you get to that level of Uttam Bhakti, then you can go and sit anywhere and practice and you won't be disturbed. But until we reach that level, we have need the association of devotees. So give. You know, generally what people do is, they're busy in their material life, and they try to squeeze in a little bit of devotion or spirituality. Actually, it should be the other way around. That we are completely 24 hours Krishna conscious. And in between that, we're trying to squeeze in our work, our other activities. That is, Krishna, that is what Srila Prabhupada wanted us to do. Everybody here had some challenge today, but you all are here. And the next Sunday we are doing Gordon Puja and then after that there is another festival and then there is festival, every Sunday is a festival. But if we make it a point that I am not going here for myself. When we go to temples, it's yes, for my own benefit. But when we come to the next level, that I am not going for myself. I am going there for, to help somebody, to bring them closer to Krishna. I remember the day when I first went to the ISKCON temple. And somebody took time to talk to me and answer my questions. And for years and years, that person did that. And that is the only reason why I'm sitting here talking today. So when we come to the temple, we don't come because of myself. I, I never come for myself. I only come and I tell my family, we are not going for ourselves. We are going to serve the Vaishnavas. 
And when you go to serve the Vaishnavas, then anything that comes in your way is not important. And if Krishna has promised, if you take such hard steps towards Krishna, Krishna will always help you. But we have to give him that opportunity. Unless it's really, if you're sick, you're traveling, you can be, that's fine. But make it a point that you are coming to serve other people, serve other devotees. And that's what Srila Prabhupada wanted. That's why he came to America. Otherwise, he could have stayed in Vrindavan, 69-year-old gentleman, sannyasi, takes a merchant navy <coughs> ship with two heart attacks on a ship, comes to America to preach this Bhagavad Dharma. So we owe him. So thank you very much for your kind attention. If anybody has, I can take one question or comment. Hare Krishna. Anyone? My answer will be short. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna.